Look at the sky. It's so blue today. Beautiful, right? And guess what today is a super special day. Is it your birthday? No, but it's the Earth's birthday. Well, sort of. Today is Earth Day, a day to celebrate our planet and learn how to take care of it. Oh, that sounds awesome. But how do we celebrate the Earth? Do we throw it a party? Kind of. Instead of cake and balloons, we do things to help the planet, like planting trees, saving water, and picking up litter. That actually sounds really cool. Can we do some fun Earth-saving activities today? Of course. Plus, I have some awesome fun facts and cool challenges to test your knowledge. Ready to become an Earth hero? Oh yeah, let's do this. First question is, when do scientists believe Earth was formed? A. 500 million years ago B. 4.5 billion years ago C. 10,000 years ago Um, I think it's a 500 million years ago. Not quite. The correct answer is B. 4.5 billion years ago. Scientists believe that Earth formed from dust and gas clumping together in space. Over time, it cooled down and became the planet we live on today. Whoa, that's really, really old. It sure is. And here's a fun fact. Early Earth didn't have any oxygen to breathe. The first tiny life forms helped create oxygen over millions of years, making it possible for plants, animals, and even us to exist. Question 2. What did Earth look like when it was just formed? A. Full of water and green trees. B. Hot and full of volcanoes. C. Covered in big cities. I think A. Not quite. The correct answer is B. In the beginning, Earth was super hot, full of lava and volcanoes, and there was no life at all. It was like a giant fireball. Whoa, that sounds like an action movie. Totally, but over time, Earth started to cool down, water appeared, and tiny life forms began to grow in the oceans. If Earth used to be really hot and then cooled down, can it get hot again now? Oh, you just brought up a super important topic, Matt. And that's exactly what question 3 is all about. Question 3. What is the name of the phenomenon that's making Earth warmer today? A. Light pollution B. The greenhouse effect C. Earth expanding I think it's B. The greenhouse effect Correct! The greenhouse effect happens when gases like carbon dioxide trap heat from the sun, making Earth warmer. A little bit is okay, but too much can be dangerous. If trees help clean the air, can I grow a whole forest in my bedroom? That's a super creative idea, Matt, but also, kind of silly. And that brings us to question 4. What is something that trees cannot do? A. Make oxygen for us to breathe. B. Absorb carbon dioxide from the air. C. Cook noodles when you're hungry. Definitely C. Trees don't cook noodles. Correct! Trees do amazing things like making oxygen, absorbing carbon dioxide, and cooling the air. But cooking noodles? That's not on their resume. Lily, if the ice at the North Pole melts, will it affect places far away like where we live? Yes, Matt. When the ice at the North Pole melts, it doesn't just affect that area. It impacts the whole world. And that's exactly what question 5 is about. Why does melting ice at the North Pole affect the entire world? A. Because sea levels rise, causing floods in many places. B. Because there are sharks in the ice. C. Because penguins have no place to play. I think it's A. Correct. When ice at the North Pole melts, the water flows into the ocean, making sea levels rise. This can cause flooding in many coastal areas around the world, affecting the lives of many people. That's why protecting the environment is so important to help reduce this problem. If 
If the Arctic ice keeps melting, will it affect animals living there? Absolutely, Matt. Many animals depend on the ice for their homes and hunting grounds. Let's explore this with question 6. Which Arctic animal is most affected by melting sea ice? A. Penguin B. Polar bear C. Kangaroo I think it's the polar bear. That's right, Matt. Polar bears need sea ice to hunt for their favorite food, seals. When the ice melts, they have to swim longer distances or stay on land, where it's harder to find enough food. This makes it tough for them to stay healthy and take care of their cubs. So, melting ice isn't just about less space. It means polar bears might go hungry. That's why it's important to protect their icy home. This is the next challenge to you. Now, let's see how you do with this one. What is a major consequence of cutting down large areas of forests deforestation? A. More space for animals to live. B. Increased oxygen levels in the atmosphere. C. Loss of biodiversity and disruption of ecosystems. Hmm, I think it's A. Not quite, Matt. The correct answer is C. When forests are cut down, many animals lose their homes, and plant species can disappear. This loss of biodiversity can disrupt entire ecosystems and negatively affect the environment. Lily, I saw a video where people saved one animal, and then suddenly other animals came back too. How does that even work? Oh, you're talking about something super cool and that's your next challenge. What happens when we protect a keystone species in nature? A. Only that one animal gets saved. B. It helps balance the whole ecosystem, and other plants and animals start to recover too. C. The animals get superpowers and take over the forest. Um, C sounds awesome, but I'll go with A. I love the superpower idea, but the right answer is B. A keystone species is like the superhero of an ecosystem. If we protect it, like wolves in a forest or sea otters in the ocean, it helps everything else stay in balance. Plants grow, other animals return, and nature becomes healthy again. Whoa! So helping one animal can save the whole forest? That's like magic. But, what about the ocean? It's so big, how can we even protect it? Great question, Matt. Oceans are super important, and even the smallest actions can make a big difference. That brings us to your next tricky challenge. What is one of the biggest threats to ocean animals today? A. Too much salt in the water. B. Plastic pollution like bags and bottles. C. Fish getting bored and swimming away. Hmm, maybe it's A. I mean, salt can't be good in huge amounts, right? Oh no, nice try. But the correct answer is B. Every year, millions of tons of plastic end up in our oceans. Sea turtles mistake plastic bags for jellyfish, and fish eat tiny plastic pieces thinking it's food. That's why using less plastic, like reusable bottles or bags, really helps the ocean and all the creatures in it. Wow, I had no idea the Earth needed so much help, from trees to oceans to even tiny bees. Everything matters. That's right, Matt. Every little action counts, whether it's turning off the lights, planting a tree, or saying no to plastic straws. I'm gonna be an Earth hero. Starting today, I'll recycle, ride my bike more, and tell my friends what I learned. Thanks, Lily. This was the best Earth Day lesson ever. If you enjoy our video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you, and goodbye.